uh, let, let the musicians do the A and R. Let them pick the music. All right. So that's where it started. It started with Ground Up, and we'll we'll probably do a whole show on Ground Up. Okay. But you know, soon after that, I was uh, traveling to Atlanta, Georgia, and I had met uh, a gentleman by by digital means named Brian Hurst from London, and he was visiting Atlanta where he used to DJ. And he introduced me to so many people in that first visit, and I saw this, you know, the, the, the networking that's going on among musicians, and I thought, well, you know, Atlanta would be a great base for a label. And in this case, it's a little bit different. Uh, Brian's DJ, seasoned veteran, uh, and he picks most everything that goes on at Atlanta Records. All right. So I, I've had the opportunity to, to to meet Brian, hang out with Brian, break bread, have some drinks, have some laughs. Uh, <laughs> great human being. Yep. First of all, I knew his background as a DJ. What? Okay, so you, you, you met him digitally. I get that. You, you, you then go down to Atlanta. You guys meet in person. Who brings that up? Does Brian say, "Hey, I want to you know start this imprint"? Do you? Do you no, I brought it up. You brought, yeah. you brought it up. Yeah. How does that conversation go? Oh, um, yeah, get ready. It's, it's really, it's really, uh, it's a little bit intricate. I'm not sure how much time we have. It's like, hey, do you want to start a label? Yeah, okay, let's go. Just like that? Yeah, pretty much. And then it was like, well, what are we going to call it? You know? And uh, I don't know if Atlanta Records was our first choice, but uh, I really liked Atlanta and how it, how it played off of uh, Atlantic. Right, right, and uh, you know, you Google some stuff, you see if there's an Atlanta Records, and there was some little imprint from from Selecto Hits or something, or maybe maybe our first choice was already taken by Selecto Hits, and so we went with Atlanta Records, yeah. And then we, you know, I put, I put you put the graphic design on it, and you're like, yeah, that, that that looks pretty cool. Let's go with that, and then uh, let's let's talk to people. I I think the one drawback of the name Atlanta Records is that everybody thinks it's just people in Atlanta. The idea was to take the Atlanta community and connect it around the world to other. So Dion Farris, of course, from Atlanta. Right. And that was a that was a different thing. Charlie Hunter had approached me and said, you know, I've got this record with Dion, and uh, you know, I want to I want to put it out. And I thought, well, this would be a great record to kick off. Atlanta Records. So. There it is. A label is born. Wow. But, but it was ever thus. I mean, that's that's how. That's how. Uh, I'm gonna get you know started. That's, that's, people were like, let's make a record label. Let's do it. You know. And it lives or dies by the quality of the music and you know the the, the brand itself. Not not so much by you know what what business moves you make. I mean, there's a lot of that too. But uh, you know we know how to we know how to run lean and mean. So sure. you know, and I, I think Atlanta has been, as we can hear, uh, a really interesting. Robodo feels like it's all over the map sometimes. You know, a lot of different things. Atlanta's super targeted. You know, I mean, and that's that's Brian. You know, he's he's picking particular styles that he feels are great for the for the label. What, what do we have on now? Well, this is. A song titled Hang Up On My Baby by Chance Hayden. Chance, of course. From Portland, Oregon. Because it, you know, when I sent him, sent him stuff, hey, any interest in this for Atlanta Records? And he either comes back and says, 
Absolutely, or not so much. <laughs> not so much. Not, not so much, senor. Yeah. You always, it's, the, na- the, 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 the turn downs always say senor. senor. Yeah. I mean, that's what I love about Brian. He's completely direct uh, with every bit of his conversation from music and just, just talking and shooting the shit, really, pretty much. Um, shout out to him, man. So, so this is great. So that's that, that, that label was born 2012 ish, 2013, you know. Oh man, I, I can't. I don't remember. So over, over this period of time, how many how many records would you say Lillian has put out? I think uh, almost ten. You know, nine okay. or ten, eight or nine maybe. Um, Dion Farris, uh, Shante Can, Mishan Young, uh, Chance Hayden, Lara Tagli Latella. Um, that's one that came through on my side. Okay. Uh, JJ Tells Foro uh, from Fun Slow Ride in Rome right, right. sent through and said, hey, you know, I really dig this. I think that's how Laura came. Oh, no, Laura was friends with Logan. Logan Richardson. <laughs> yeah, there's always a connection. Right. But, yeah. Um, but JJ, doesn't he have, didn't he also do something recently with, um, oh, the bass player. Why am I spacing on his name? Dario Deida. Yeah, there that's the one that JJ said. Right. There you go. Yeah, so Laura came through Logan Richardson. And, wow. and and there was an interesting choice. You know, Rope It Up Scattered, Atlanta's Little Focused, I listened to the record, I sent it to Brian, I said, Brian, is this right for Atlanta? And he said, yes, sir. That's great. That's good. Well, guys, make sure you're tuning in to, you know, RobotUp.com. Where can where can people find the the, the catalog of, of the Atlanta land? Got Soul. Bandcamp.com. Atlanta Got Soul on Twitter and on Instagram, I believe. So make sure you yeah. dial in, man. That's that's sweet. And so many great da- great people down in Atlanta. I just really want to say, like, you know, here's another. Cue me in here. So Samara Samara smiles. Bahari and Bahari Bahari Amral and Chiba Chiba there, you want coffee <laughs> Brian, but he really is 
is so tightly focused on creating quality audio and quality programming and quality video uh, beyond what I've seen anyone else in this business do. Well, as an example, Ryan probably would never do something like this, throw a cell phone up on the car and hit record and do a video. He probably would. That would not be... Oh, no, in this air, he's just going to be like, what? <laughs> what? what are you guys doing? <laughs> That's why we're... We're gonna shout him out a lot. He's kind of smooth over that that thing. Um, well, he will appreciate the time efficiency, though. The fact that we're gonna record two shows while driving to a show. Why waste any minute? You know, That's right. Especially on the travel to New York. Time is money. Time is time is everything. Well, I, I time is the master. Well, it is. Where the lack of time can be the slave, I guess. Right. A disaster. Master of disaster. That's right. That's horrible, horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, I'm quoting uh, uh, Dub Side of the Moon from the Easy Star All Stars. Book. Time is the bastard, time is the disaster. In case anybody get that. What have we got coming up? We got Chante Can coming up. You're going to love this. We're going to take a little time on this, huh? Yeah. Beautiful. A little bass heavy. In the beginning. My grave is so. Love has made its mark When you crashed into my heart You hit me like a shooting star I'm crazy over you Can't you see it in the sparks Shines brightly in the dark The universe knows who we are. Ooh, I can't get away from you. Can't keep me away from you. We belong together like greatest on the Shantae had been on uh, Smite Coffee Family Dinner. Okay. So we had been in touch. And she's from Atlanta. Um, not that that's the criteria. <laughs> but we really did feel that the record was best suited uh, in, that Atlanta, in that Atlanta catalog. Um, and not just for the musical style, but also for the uh, for the branding and the, and the power and the support that that growing community uh, had to offer. Love it. So... Uh, I was just just pointing out to you that um, you know you're in Jersey when there's a beautiful green pasture and trees on one side of the road and a giant factory on the other side of the road. That's, that's where we live. Well, the further north you get, the more you get of those factories, I guess, right? Yeah, that's where they grow the smokestacks in the Garden State. They grow the smokestacks. Yeah. <laughs> smokestack farms. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're digging in into the imprints, you know, that Robodub is helping out, and there's quite a, quite a few, you know, we talked about Ground Up, and I know in other episodes we're going to dig a little bit deeper into each individual uh, uh, imprint, you know, was was Atlanta the second one in, in that in that line, or? I'm pretty sure it was, with, and I was thinking about this today as I put this together, uh, with the possible exception of Masher Beats. Okay. So, you know, some of these labels are labels that artists had already set up okay, uh, or set up specifically kind of what you might call a vanity label and I think when, when Master Beats first came on with Mark DeClivelo it was his label and only for his music which is what the term vanity label means which is kind of an unfair term uh, there, there, there's a good reason to have your own record label even for your own music Sure, um, but there's a distinction between 
I'm releasing my own projects on this versus I'm signing other artists. And Mark has gone on to uh, put out a record from Tommaso Capolato, uh, and I'm sure there are plans for the future. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so, so they'll run the gamut of something that we decided to start uh, for, for the focus right. to uh, an artist who, Maurice Brown, Mo Betta, that's his label, um, to people who are tastemakers, um, networking, and really want to sign uh, other people. People like Christian Scott with Stretch Music, Spud Seawright with RSVP Records, uh, uh, Adam Mahoja with Infinity Gritty, right. um, Sounds of Crenshaw, Terrace Martin. Uh, who am I missing? I know there's more. There's lots more. Broken Up Sir, uh, Todd Glauser. He's in Mexico City. He's, he's connected with a lot of people down there. And, you know, he's got his, his finger on the pulse. Um, so he, he becomes a spot for people to connect. And, you know, it's, it's almost, it's kind of like opening... I don't want to say hospitals. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's like... <laughs> it's like... It's like... It's, when you want to have a global connection, and, a, and a, what, what I coin or what I what I call, I borrowed the phrase, a distributed collaborative network. That's the goal: is to try to get everybody connected, right? When you know capitalist systems thrive on vertical, one vertical path, right? The problem with the music business is 60% is controlled by three labels on the supply side, and. 80% is controlled by two or three digital service providers on the on, on the on the customer side, right? This is what you call a, an almost a vertical path, right? There's no, it's like you put a highway straight through everywhere, and you only have a certain number of exits. So everybody's jammed up at the exits, and some people are getting on the highway, and some people aren't, right? So the more arterial roads and smaller ways, you know, uh, to enter and connect with fans the better and you know we're going to enter a time where we want to have more ways to to connect with fans we're fighting the battle because spotify and streaming and, and apple you know the streaming business is reclaiming the, the old music business for the for the shitty situation that it was Interesting. now i can't even because when i when we when somebody streams an artist's song the artist if the artist doesn't know that that happens and isn't connected with the person then he's dependent on the the middleman person that got in there and they love it like that they just love you depending on the middle man they got to come back every time right you know how can an artist survive without being on Spotify and Apple right now you know, the answer is probably you can't right so that's that's the now where we are with the, with these imprints is that we have hubs we have spaces where people can connect plug in and access the same fan base as we are continuing to try to grow the fan base, yeah. right? And we grow the fan base right away because all of the people that are fans of that artist in that region are now connected to Roku. I love it, right? So, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful concept. It is very difficult to execute. Um, it requires a lot of hard work on everybody's part, a lot of learning curve. Uh, all the while, you know, fighting a dragon with a toothpick. <laughs> On, on the, on, you know, on, on the commercial side, you know. Apologies to our tech overlords on which platform we are going to put this show. Uh, <laughs> right? There it is. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. But uh, you know, that is the persistent goal: is always to try to diffuse, you know, reach people in many places and take down the barriers of entry, and then have people connect. You can, you know, right now you can get online in Indonesia and actually chat with somebody in Augusta, Georgia. Right. Right. So we, that that we, we need we need to be in that process. That's what it was about. Wow. I got a little heavy there. Well, no, a deeper a deeper, a deeper dive. You know, we're 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 coming out with Spring and Third from Southwest Terminal. You know, special shout out to Atlanta Records. Special shout out to Brian Hurst, miss you buddy, gotta get him a phone call. You know, shout out to all the artists here, Dion Ferris, Charlie Hunter, Lindsey Webster, Chance Hayden, uh, Shante Can, uh, Southwest Terminal, not Kari, how do you say it again? Kari. Kari. <laughs> and not Java, but? Jiva. Jiva. 
You want to stop for some Java? No, my dyslexia well, is definitely to Java. Kicking, kicking in. Uh, shout out to our producers. This show was produced by speaking into a microphone. <laughs> I love that line. I don't know who used it, but I, I, I'm, I'm borrowing it. Uh, right. Make sure you guys are subscribing, all that fun stuff, and uh, we'll catch you. We'll catch you on the flip on the way back. Sounds of Crenshaw is next.